We are in the middle of a four-week practice on generosity, which is four weeks on how do we actually live like Jesus lived when it comes to our money and our wealth and our possessions. And one thing we like to do as we engage with these practices is hear stories from people in our church who are also engaging with these things alongside of us. And so last week we heard from Mike and Grace, a really powerful testimony about how God responded to them giving. Uh, Today we're going to hear a story. So I'm going to invite Alex and Julie up. And we're going to hear a story, uh, sort of the flip side of that. What happens when you receive generosity? How can that impact you and and change you uh, and your discipleship to Jesus? So uh, Alex and Julie, you guys have been a part of our community for uh, a couple years now, a few years now. Um, And I love this. Every time we share a story, it's always because... Uh, somebody has uh, responded to God and and basically you're participating in the way of Jesus with us. Uh, and I think God has responded to that. And that's why you guys have a story to share. So thank you guys. They're also in my group. So I little bias, I like them. Uh, you guys just bring a lot of value to our church. We're really grateful for you. But um, you guys, your story starts out uh, kind of similarly where you guys had a really Uh, a couple of really big financial needs. So why don't we start there and yeah, we'll have you guys share kind of where you were at to start. Yeah, we're really grateful to be able to share this story. This happened exactly at this time last year. Um, October 16th was when my religious visa was going to expire, my legal permit to be here. And my wife and I had budgeted to be able to pay for all the expenses. It was a really long and complicated and expensive process. Uh, We knew how much we needed to save every week and September comes around and I worked for two weeks. My boss didn't get paid. I worked at a very informal job. And the other two weeks of that month, we, we didn't have work at all. Every day uh, he would call us, we'd show up to a job site, no material, uh, things wouldn't come through. I was trying to find a way to provide. We were really stressed. We were really having a hard time just paying the bills and everything else. And I remember even looking on Craigslist just for moving jobs or anything that I could just, just do that day to be able to provide. And, that was really getting to me because I would see how my wife uh, and I were so stressed and I, and I wanted to provide and I wanted to be able to show her that I could be able to support our finances and it just got to the point where we couldn't and, and we could, could see that si- October 16th was coming around. October came and the situation hadn't changed and we were just praying and, and uh, my wife, uh, she told me she was gonna reach out to the church and I was hesitant. I told her, no, I can do this, I'll find a way. I've, I found a way before I can do this, and it was a lot of pride as a man to, to ask for help. And that's the situation we were in last year. Yeah, Julie, yours is a little more recent, so I don't know if you want to share a little bit about where you were at. Yeah. I'm not going to cry this time. That's okay. You can cry. <laughs> um, yeah, so last month, my health kind of just hit the fan. I had another seizure. My wisdom teeth, I found out they were impacted and growing cysts. So we put all our money towards that. We were able to pay for it. I was very happy about that. Um, but then I get a call, and they said they're reoccurring. They're going to keep happening. And once they're removed, they actually get worse. So at that point, we kind of just hit a wall. And I had no idea what to do. So we looked at all of our options, and there were none. So I reached out to Pastor Trey, and he was so gracious. He was so kind, <laughs> which I was just I wasn't expecting a second time but he was just so kind to us. Um, And then within two days, he was able to get multiple anonymous donors from this community to help pay for it. So this Tuesday, I actually get to have the procedure thanks to Passion Creek. That's great. Uh, Alex, for you, um, yeah, talk about what happened. I mean, obviously you had that need met, so how how did that happen? What did that look like? Yeah, when my wife reached out, I remember the email that she received from the church, uh, Pastor Trey, Pastor Caleb, the deacons, all of you, we are so grateful. I remember just reading the email, and the first thing that I, I remember was how graceful the response was. When you ask for help, I've always felt that, um, especially for me, like, oh, God knows me. God, God knows my, my, my thoughts. He knows what I do. He knows my intentions. I don't deserve anything. And when the help came, the, just the response, the way the church received it, made me feel, humbled me completely, uh, made me feel foolish for not asking for help, for just asking for prayer. Oh, yeah, uh, especially in the life groups. Oh, uh, we have this need. Can you guys help us pray? But actually uh, extending and being, hey, guys, can you help us? That was something that, as a man, really humbled me, really floored me. To see the response from the church was something incredible. We were able to file everything before the deadline. 
uh, when we filed the last, uh, last documents, it just took a month and a half for the green card to come through and everything. And um, I was able to go visit my mom two months ago. I hadn't seen my family for three years. And uh, I got a new job. Thank God I work for, for Tyler, for ELM now. And not only was it a response for that need, but also for all these other situations in our, in our, in our family that uh, God was able to resolve through the generosity from somebody in church. Yeah, that's great. What um, last question I'll ask is how how has that kind of impacted your discipleship to Jesus and how you view like community and, and generosity and all that? Yeah, I, I want to read uh, Galatians chapter six, verse uh, nine and ten. Um, it says, let us not get tired of doing good, for we will reap at the proper time if we don't give up. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us work for the good of all, especially for those who belong to the household of faith. Um, there's so many reasons we give. It's easy to give to Africa, to an orphanage in Mexico, to help other people. But there are needs within the household of faith as well. Many times we don't even know or we don't think anybody has a need because I don't have a need. Or we just pray about it. God will provide. But I was so blessed, my wife and I. And uh, thank you so much for that help you guys gave us. It changed, it changed the whole situation and it gave us hope. Thank you so much. Yeah, um, I feel... Yeah, let's applaud that. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> Someone was, like, scared to. It's like, do we clap? Do we... No, this is good. You're supposed to clap. This is good stuff. I feel like we've just seen this church working so much in our lives, even in small ways, like when Julie brought us dinner um, after that seizure, Tyler giving um, Alex that job. It just all came at the right time. And if anything, I feel like it's just pushed us into seeing how God is working in our life and how we want to be able to give that back to this community. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you guys.